Kahalal Yahawa, Bahashem Yahawa Shai, Waha, Prakakwadash. In Hebrew, that's giving all praises to the Most High, Yahawa, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahawa Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles who rule well and teach well, honors to the brethren that's laboring, doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, which will be the one-third of the nation of Israel, the true Israelites, who are the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, who sincerely return it back to Yahweh and Yahweh Shah by coming back to this word during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Now, we're going to tackle this lie that 144,000 people will be saved. Not sure what I'm going to title the lesson, but we're going to tackle the lie of 144,000 people being saved. Because you will hear a lot of people say that. It shows they don't know the scriptures. They don't read. Book of Revelation say, blessed is he who readeth this book. But we're going to show at least a few ways that this is a big lie. Like saying 144,000 people going to be saved, that that's a cut itself. That statement cuts itself so many ways. So, for example, if 144,000 people was going to be saved, do you know those 144,000 people named in the book of Revelation are all Israelites? So again, the 144,000 in the book of Revelation are all Israelites because the same people that say anybody can get salvation, that people of all nations get salvation, are the same people that say 144,000 going to be saved. So is the Lord going to save a certain number from each nation? But let's read Revelation 74. When I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So yeah, the same people that say anybody can get salvation will say only 144,000 going to be saved. Well, if that was true, if only 144,000 people would get saved, we just read it right here that they will all be Israelites. Now, only Israelites do get salvation. That part is correct, but not only 144,000. And we're going to show what that means. So let's just finish reading up through verse 8. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed, sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. Levi, 12,000. Issachar, 12,000. Zebulon, 12,000. Joseph, 12,000. And Benjamin, 12,000. So yeah, the 144,000 are all Israelites. It's not all people. And this number that we just read, the 144,000, will be the prophets who will be prophesying during the last days, warning other Israelites of the coming destruction and to repent and turn back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now going back up to Revelation 7 and 4, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So, the 144,000, those who will be sealed, these are all men. And it's not going to only be men that be saved. It's going to be women and children that get saved as well. So, that's one reason that the 144,000 will only be those that get saved. That's one reason why that is incorrect. Because again, the 144,000 is all men. And we're going to prove that. So next, we're going to actually, 
we actually gonna go up a little bit revelation 72 and i saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living god and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our god yahweh in their foreheads so the servants the 144,000 will be sealed in their foreheads now we're going to show what the seal is and show that it's only men that's going to be sealed which will be the prophets ezekiel 9 verse 3 and the glory of the god of israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was to the threshold of the house and he called to the man which is an angel clothed with linen which had the writer's inkhorn by his side verse 4 and the lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of jerusalem now in this day it wouldn't be actual physical jerusalem it would be the people of jerusalem who are scattered to the four corners of the earth so through the people of jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof so we see here it says set a mark upon the foreheads of the men key word is forehead that sign cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof let's go up down the verse verse 5 and to the others he said in my hearing to the others who will not have this mark in their forehead go ye after him through the city and smite let not your eyes spare neither have ye pity slay utterly old and young both maids and little children and women but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin in my sanctuary so this mark of course will be to be exempt from judgment to be saved to receive mercy during the lord's wrath now we show that 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 being sealed in the forehead that was the men being marked in their foreheads because again set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry not women and children but we're going to link this back up to revelation 7 when it says saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our god in their foreheads let's see what it means to be sealed let's see what the mark in that forehead is so back to revelation chapter 14 verse 1 and i looked and lo a lamb stood on the mount zion and with him a hundred and forty four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads so going back to revelation 73 saying hurt not the earth neither the trees till we have sealed the servants of yahweh in their foreheads ezekiel 9 and 4 not 9 and 4 go through the midst of jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the man that sigh and cry for all the abominations so being sealed being marked for 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 being marked to be exempt from judgment that's having the father's name written in your forehead now this is not literal this is a spiritual mark so pretty much the lord writing his signature on us his stamp of approval and it's only men that get this first of all because again going back set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sign and cry for all the abominations so the 144,000 are all men so that's why 144,000 people being saved is incorrect because again the 144,000 are all men so that's the first point the second point again only 144,000 being saved that's too small of a number Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah going to save way more people than that. And we're going to show that with the scriptures. So now we're going to jump to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, 14 through 15. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that 
that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel at the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, North America, and from all the lands, whether he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So we still talk about the exodus from Egypt, even to this day. We still keep that Passover upon coming back to this truth. But the days come, we're not going to talk about that exodus no more. Why? Again, but because but, again, it says the days come that it will no more be said. The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, North America. Because this second exodus being saved from the nuclear destruction in America is going to far exceed the deliverance from ancient Egypt. You know, this deliverance that's coming up, the second exodus, is going to be out of this world. Way more people getting saved. And instead of one chariot, it's going to be thousands of chariots. And instead of us following the chariot, you know, through the water and in the wilderness for 40 years, we're going to actually be beamed up on the chariots. So that's why this second exodus is going to far outweigh, far exceed the first exodus. And one of those reasons being, many more people are going to get saved. Now, let's see how many people got saved out of the first exodus in the land of Egypt. Ezekiel chapter 12, we're going to go down to verse 30. Hmm, hold on. Dang, that's not right. Ezekiel. So we're going to go to Exodus chapter 12, verse 37. And the children of Israel journey from Ramses to Sakath about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. As a matter of fact, I might go up a little bit. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor, favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. So this is when we was running out of Egypt before going into the Red Sea. And again, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sakath. About 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. So how many people came up out of Egypt? About 600,000 men. That's why only 144,000 being saved, again, is not correct. That's, that's, that's too low of a number. Even coming out of Egypt, 600 men came out. I'm sorry, 600,000 men came out. And that's not including the women and children. Now, if you include the women and children, a probably three, four, five million people probably came out of Egypt when you include women and children. Because again, 600,000 men came out of Egypt, not including women and children. So that's pretty much the second point of why 144,000 being saved is incorrect it's too few of a number because again we're not going to talk about the first exodus no more we're only going to speak about the second one because the second exodus is going to far outshine the first exodus there's going to be a much greater exodus and one thing to take note of it tells you about how many people came out of egypt it's a real rough estimate but we do got about 600,000 men that were on foot, besides children and, of course, women. But the point is, you can put a number on it. You can get a real rough estimate. Well, how many people that's going to get saved out of this nuclear destruction from America and the rest of the world? You're not going to be able to number it. And we're going to show that in the scriptures. So we're going to go to the book, back to the book of Revelation. Chapter 7, we're going to go to verse 9. So just previously, 
we was reading about the 12,000 prophets who were men who had the name of the Heavenly Father sealed or marked in their foreheads as a stamp of approval. After we read this, verse 9 starts off by saying, after this. So after John saw the 144,000, the 12,000 from each tribe, after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude. So after the 144,000, after that, John saw a great multitude. Let's continue. Which no man could number. So yeah, John saw a great multitude that no man could number. Because what? Exodus, it numbered 600,000 men, plus women and children. Revelation concerning the 144,000 prophets, you could put a number on that. But this great multitude, which would be the one-third elect, the true believers, who going to be saved, who believing on this truth, you can't put a number on it. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people. And tongues stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white, robes and palms in their hands. Now, when you go to the Blue Letter Bible, which I'll probably do a separate lesson on, when you look up the actual Greek word for nations, kindreds, people, and tongues, it's not so broad of a term that you think it is. They all narrow down to one group of people, which would be the Israelites. And I got a little slick verse that kind of shows that. So again, this great multitude which no man could number of all nations. Why does it say that? Because the children of Israel were scattered to the four corners of the earth. We would be scattered amongst all people. So you will have Israelites that may appear Chinese, may appear Japanese, may appear Indian. You know, but the one third elect, the believers, that's part of this great multitude, they're going to be called out of all nations, kindreds, and people in tongues. We're going to show that in Revelation 5 and 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and has redeemed to us, to God, by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. So when we see a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, and people, it will really be the true believers who will be redeemed back to the Most High, out of every kindred, out of every tongue, out of every people, and out of every nation. The Lord is going to pick his elect, which will be the one-third of the nation of Israel. He's going to pick us out from among the people where we were scattered. And just to show that real quick, Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So the Lord will call us out of these nations to meet him in the air. But the second point is, 144,000 is not going to be saved. It's going to be way more. You could put a number on 144,000. But what we just read in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9, after John saw the 144,000, he saw a greater multitude that no man could number, meaning you can't put a number on it. It may be hundreds of millions of people. It may be a billion plus people that receive salvation to meet Yahweh Shah in the air. But the point is, you can't put a number on it. And you can easily put a number on 144,000. So that's the many cuts of 144,000 can be saved because 144,000 is all men. Doesn't include women and children. The men who doing this work prophesying. And 144,000 is too few. Considering that the Lord brought 600,000 men out of Egypt alone, not women and children. Why would the Lord save fewer people this time 
considering that there's way more people in the earth. So that's it for this lesson here. Until next time, Shalom.